Welcome back to Sailing Ruby Rose from the Annapolis Boat Show 2023. Now this is the Balance 442. And while we were here, we thought we'd look at what else is on the market in the 40 to 46 foot catamaran range. The Balance 442 is an amazing and beautiful craft. Let's go and have a good look. Okay, here I am at the Versa Helm of the Balance 442. So this is obviously where all the sailing itself takes place. I've got all the winches in front of me and it looks like almost all the lines uh, run back to this particular point with probably a few exceptions. We'll go over to the port side in a moment and see what happens over there. But I've obviously got a lot of my instruments here. I've got my autopilot, engine controls, three big winches with, let's have a look to see what lines come back here. So we've got the jib, sheet, the halyard, the topping lift, the mainsail downhaul, the starboard main sheet, reefing lines, and the port main sheet, as well as a massive chart plotter in front of me. So that's interesting. Visibility wise, while I'm sitting down, if I was on watch, I would have really good visibility. If I was um, actually parking the boat, it might be a little bit more difficult to see what's happening on port, obviously starboard happy days but this is where the Verso Helm comes in because obviously you have the option to be in several different locations and still have that control over the helm. What do I think of it? It's very, the, the visibility is great. It does give you the best of both worlds. We are carrying much much more windage than Ruby Rose 2 here. This boat is a lot higher, considerably higher. Add to this the retractable bimini. As a position I like it. I like it. Would I want to be on long, long passages up here? No, I wouldn't. That's where down the, the, the second or third helm position comes in. You want something down low, and I think that really does give that. What else do I really like? I really do like these line bins. They also, yeah. you know, that's, a, that's really, really nice. Very neat. Everything foot switch controlled. I'm not 100% about just having so many foot switches for everything. I like to see what's going on, but everything- Maybe something just to get used to. Yes, but yeah, everything is fingertip control uh, and we have a cup holder. <laughs> so yeah, that's as, as, you know, as you know. So look, you know, just from the point of view of the boom, I'm five foot nine, I am an absolute short ass. And I am, if I was six foot three, my head would be at boom height. So yeah, that's something point, to be aware of. So basically, I know that you can, you will raise the boom when you're sailing, but again, you know, the six or three above. The other point is, and these are just minor gripes, I'm not griping about this. There's a handrail here to get yourself down, but you can't grab it because the wheel's in the, pla in, in, in the place there. And ideally I would have liked to see a hand row in a different position because that is what you'd grab in an emergency. And as you know, with the autopilot in play, yeah. that could be a hazard. Overall, I love it. Um, this, these whole composite bucket seats are very reminiscent of the Seawind 1600 and I do like it. The other point I want to look at, there are, there's a gate here. So we do yeah. are looking at gates. And so this is open to the, to the outside and you're looking essentially a, a wire to hold you in place. So as you can also see, as we've mentioned, we've got this retractable bimini, which actually when it all comes down, packs away pretty smoothly. There's a gutter here to hold it all, but obviously, you know, the ex you will be less exposed when you pull all this up. And again, just for, you know, inclement weather and rain. Or and sun. A, or sun. And of course, when you've got the, uh, it, when you've got the Versa Helm down, there's a, a whole thing that comes across here to, to kind of like keep everything, you know, covered so to give you kind of like far better protection it's quite well thought, thought through yeah, really isn't very, it very very thought through, and but. amazingly like good visibility to your sails as well yeah yeah so they're no absolutely fantastic so yeah visibility great really clear lines the purists among you would say that really you'd want a line capture system so that the lines aren't all just across the decks as a tripping hazard we had that very clearly with the design of ruby rose 2 we never found it a problem when we did sail a couple of Seawind 1260s um, and they have, they don't have captive lines. The footrest is great, it's fixed in place. So it's comfortable it to, with you, to yeah. put your feet on as well. And so as a, as a position, I think honestly this boat, in this position, happily be like cruising the Bahamas, looking out for bombies, having a really good look yeah. around, you've got access to the side decks. For kind of like heavier weather, let's let's head down and look at the other position. Okay, so the Versa helmet, it's literally just done on the, there's a button here to lock it in place. Yep. To unlock it. We bring that up and then this whole area just slides back into this position. Wait for the click and we're down again. Yeah, so, fantastic. Visibility, really good. I can see both bows and I can see just about both sterns. So we have full visibility. I would actually say that the visibility from this position is better than up there 
for docking. Yeah, okay. That's pretty interesting that whatever the, the up position was designed for. Seems to work better here. We have obviously a full array of uh, electronics. We've got the same uh, electronic throttles that we've got on Ruby Rose 2, and I am very, we're very, very happy with those. Those, I think they're VC20s now from um, Yanmar. Really damn good. Very, very comfortable area. Very comfortable area. Any gripes? Mm. Maybe if I was to be absolutely fanatical about it, I'm five foot nine. I, can, I can't really reach these. So yeah. the horn, which actually is a safety feature, I can't, I can just about reach. And clearly, you know, you really- I couldn't reach that yeah, unless I stepped up on that, yep. that step. But look, really good. The only other thing I would say to you is that I am also a way about 78 kilos and there is not a lot of space here for me. This is, a re this is really quite narrow. Yeah, yeah, you can't even move sideways, can so you? So there is not a can lot and my knees will jam there. So. That's that, not a comfortable seating It's position. not a comfortable position. There's no yeah. footrest here, so my yeah. feet are kind of dangling a little bit. Yeah. But, you know, overall, really, really beautiful. Quality of finish. I, I think one thing we've always said about balance, like their quality, their finish is, is, is damn good. It's really beautifully really, presented, really though, refined, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Very, very refined. Yeah. This whole area, like a massive cockpit area. They've got day beds. They've got like loads of different seating areas. Lots of different configurations. I do love this design, but it is something that's pretty important to understand that while you can helm from different positions, sail management is all up there. So if it is blowing a hooli and you need to reef or you need to do something else, you can't be down here, you've got to be up there. Something to consider that the Versa helm allows you to helm but not to manage the boat. So cockpit, this cockpit is huge. It's different to Ruby Rose 2. It's kind of broken up into different areas. Quality of finish, higher than Ruby Rose 2. Can't complain there. And there's lots of lockers, lots of space. Big molded cockpit table. I actually really like this. Yeah, that's lovely. And then double engine bays. I just want to show you the engine bay because it's obviously we, you all want to know exactly what the access is like, step downs. Let's have a quick look down there. The um, material that they've put in the cockpit feels really nice underfoot as well. Yes, it does. It's what like, is it's, this? It's, it's an like, artificial teak. It's like it, a flexi teak. It feels or, like a foam underneath your feet. Yeah. So engine bay access. These are actually Lumar hatches that have had flexi teeth put over them. Personally, I would want something more solid because I think that's just personal preference. But again, big hatches, lift up there. Just as a point, they foul the steps a little bit. Mm. Now, let me have a quick look in this engine bay. So we've got a lot of lines, the helm position, everything done in spectra there, but there seems to be very, very clear access down there. These are really big engines. They're bigger, they're not the 57s. I don't know what they are, but they're, they're bigger. We'll put than it on the those. screen, we'll put it on the screen. Yeah, but again, there's a lot of systems on this boat and there's a lot of regen systems and integral systems. So yeah, very interesting, very interesting to see this. And again, from the perspective of this whole arrangement, what we do have, this uh, German main sheet system, very similar to the 1600, so the main sheet actually comes back to this area here. And then we've got the davits that are built in, again, like Ruby Rose 2, the Seawind 1370, carbon fiber, everything. It's like a really nice setup. Is it bigger than Ruby Rose 2? This boat is bigger. I mean, it says it's a 442, right? Yeah, so it's the same length. Though. It's much, much bigger. Yeah. Like volumetrically, it's, it's much bigger. Yeah. So we have lovely wide side decks here. There is a non-slip coating on here. It feels very, very sturdy underfoot. Solid solar panels on here. This is interesting. We have flexible on Ruby Rose. The jury is still out on which is better. Clearly with the air gaps underneath, there is less problem with these overheating and thus losing efficiency. Let us move forwards. Okay, one thing that is clearly apparent with the, the balance, they are they have dagger boards. So you're gonna have higher pointing, you are gonna have theoretically a slightly increased safety in big beam seas. And obviously with these up, you reduce the overall draft of the boat. So again, dagger boards, everything, all the lines head back to the cockpit here. We've got a good hand grip here. So again, there are slightly reset, so they, this feels very, very, very solid. It's a real lump yeah. of a boat. Object from there. How do I get up onto the coach roof? <laughs> that's how. That's it. That's it. Hold on to the shrouds. Yep, and you're up. And up. Not too dissimilar to Ruby Rose too. I mean, there's, look, there's, there are aluminium mast steps that go all the way up here, or so you get to the sail. But getting down here in a big sea, I wouldn't be happy with that, love. Yeah, I mean, that's a compromise that we've made on Ruby Rose yeah. too as well. 
So catwalks there, everything in aluminium, some really nice design features. The fact that you can pull all this up to get to the, the anchoring gear, the bridle system, it's all integrated. No forward facing seating area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, small trampolines. It's interesting, this boat actually, and we will obviously talk to them about not the light ship displacement because the light ship displacement is just, they make it up. I want to know the weight of this boat, mm. of this actual boat. Mm. On a kind of less important level, really nice um, seating areas yep. at the bows. Mike? This is nice. Nice. <laughs> this is very comfortable. And these are a nice little touch. They've got these articulated, these are probably in-house oh, yeah. made blocks. Any chance of chafe on those? There's always a chance of chafe, but I, I, the system is clever. So yeah, I like that. I like. Yeah. I do like it's that. It's neat, isn't it? I would want some sort of rubber cups, rubber bungees there, because that will clack. Yeah. That will clack under sail. I can absolutely tell you that. <laughs> and again, we've got like a huge amount of glass here, but really, really high freeboarded. Lots of hatches, so there's lots of ventilation in here. Interestingly, another feature that we have seen, and we saw this about the engine compartment. Oh, okay. They are using Lumar hatches the instead windows. of hatches. Yeah, interesting. So, I wonder what the rationale is there. Well, because it's well, because you can just buy them as third-party parts and stick oh, them right. on. Oh, right. I kind of think that one thing I would say about these Lumar hatches is after five or six seasons, you are going to have a lot of scratches on them and you are going to have a lot of crazing on them with time. Yeah. And so there is a lot to be said, and it's not about Lumar hatches, it's just about hatches. They craze and they scratch and they're not flush mounted. If we're talking about like minor niggles, there's a tripping hazard there. Overall, there's a, there's a whole lot I love about this boat. It is considerably more chunky than Ruby Rose 2, right? Considerably more chunky. Is this prettier than Ruby Rose inside? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would say so. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, let's go and have a good look around the boat and see what we can see. Yep. We've obviously got an open plan kind of living arrangement. This setup is very, very similar to a lot of 45 foot catamarans, and Ruby Rose 2 is no exception. So, galley, saloon area, nav station, and they've got some additional cold storage um, in this area as well. First of all, let's have a look at the galley. This is aesthetically really, really beautiful, I have to say. In fact, the entire area is very, very beautiful. So we've got a really beautiful solid bench top. We've got really stylish kind of tapware and I'm just having a quick look at storage because that is an issue with a lot of galley ups in kind of this size range because you don't have the option of kind of any upper cupboards. They've got one cupboard here so that gives you obviously quite a bit of um, storage just there. We've got an induction cook uh, top, which is really nice. They've got an oven, drawers, really lovely um, drawers actually. Let's move on to the nav station. So unlike Ruby Rose 2, and I don't want to ca continuously compare, but it's just a, a difference because I think these two boats, if people are looking for a 45 foot catamaran, maybe the 1370 and the Balance 442 are on your shortlist. No chair here, so no chance of doing any kind of, kind of sit down navigation from inside. Again, you've got the Verso Helm, so you've kind of got two options in the cockpit already. So I can kind of see why they didn't bother putting a chair here. Obviously there's no real space for a chair anyway. What do we have in here? The storage. So you've got some of your instruments here. You've got a radio here as well, a stereo, and some more storage. These are really nice deep drawers actually. So lots of storage that I'm seeing um, up here, which is really good to see. I'm not gonna pull anything apart, but yep, storage underneath all the seating as well. Really um, beautifully done table and does that, it drops. Okay, so that drops down. Oh, this is nice. These are comfortable. What a lovely spot to sit. Now, what am I gonna say? <laughs> Has anyone picked up what I'm gonna talk about next? Ventilation. So we've got these beautiful, huge windows and they are massive. They're bigger than on Ruby Rose too, but we've only got two tiny little opening hatches, which I think is a missed opportunity. You couldn't do openings for our windows uh, on these windows because obviously you've got the mast in the way, but perhaps they could have done something here where the entire window opens up and you get this really beautiful airflow through. That would be amazing because at the moment you've only got two little hatches there and then two hatches above. And I think that you know, when you're at anchor somewhere really hot and muggy and like every tiny little bit of breeze is important, then that, that might be something that is um, kind of a compromise that you're making with this boat. Okay, let's move on. An insane amount of cold storage here. <laughs> Obviously some of these are freezers and some of these are fridges. 
I will say that I'm impressed with the amount of storage up here. Isn't that a neat solution? Let's go down into the porthole. So really nice wide companionway. The steps um, are kind of, they alternate, so it's really easy to set down. If you're right-handed. <laughs> okay, this is interesting. This is my first time down here, so I'm seeing it as you are. This looks like, and I don't want to kind of genderize it, this looks like a man cave to me, um, and a really nice one as well. Maybe, I mean, this, I'd be happy here as well. We've got a TV, uh, and that probably is like um, a chart plotter, perhaps, as well, I'm not sure. And a beautiful sofa. But Nick, if you come in here, you'll see that there's also a vice. <laughs> so it's workshop, probably turns into a berth. Yep. Printer, who has a printer in 2023, wow. Mm. And a vice. And a vice. Right. Lots of storage here as well. So what I'm seeing is lots of storage on this boat. And as Nick said, I'm not sure if it does turn into a berth actually. It does turn into a berth. There's a, there's a pool down here, I think that. We, we'll ask, we'll ask. It will, yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Let's go forward. So we've got a, the heads here. Quite a small little shower stool. Oh, I've got to squeeze in. Okay. Nice uh, tapware again, that kind of black tapware is really lovely. And yeah, sink, toilet, what else do you want? Cupboards, little hatch, and now a cabin. I'm yet to see whether this is the main cabin. We'll find okay. that, that out. So this is obviously comparable to the cabin in, at the main cabin in Ruby Rose 2, in the, uh, the Sea Wind 1370. The space is not as big, so there's, I've got very little space here. It's not as spacious. I would say ventilation wise, because you know that that's my thing. The ventilation in this cabin is probably not as good. We have two opening hatches up above. This only has the one and the one hatch on the side, whereas we have several going down the hull. Similar in terms of storage, drawers, uh, I think I would say we've got more storage underneath the bed, but there's plenty of storage in, in both um, boats, to be honest. They've got storage on the side, which is probably why this feels quite cramped, because they've chosen to put some cupboards in there. Let's see what's here. Ah, cell locker. Okay, so you can access that from inside. Let's go and have a little look. So I have been asked quite a few times about access to the bed um, on River Rose 2, whether it's easy. These steps are fairly narrow, much narrower, and there's no handy holdy, so you kind of have to climb up. Oh, hang on. There is something to hold on to just here. There is like a little ledge to hold on to. Good head height. I'm five foot two. I hope whoever's boat this is forgives me for crawling all over their bed. And uh, as you can see, as a five foot two person, I can uh, sit up very comfortably. If you're six foot, you might be hitting your head, but that's fine. Really nice um, headboard. Again, beautifully done. This is a really lovely looking boat. They've got some power supplies here. They've got some like just little spaces that you can put your phone or your Kindle or whatever. Fans, as I said, only the one opening hatch up above. Okay, so my thoughts on what we've seen in the port side. Clearly this is more luxurious than Ruby Rose 2. It is, the, the finish is better. And something that I do want to point out to you because it occurs in the saloon and everywhere else. The furniture here is not made from molds. It's not the molding that's used to the furniture base is therefore they can use woods and it looks warmer and that is one criticism of sea winds or the 1370 to 1260 and the smaller ranges the 1600 is different so where you don't use modular furniture you can have whatever wood finishes that you want that in itself adds weight it also adds potential squeak points so this is the playoff we have not sailed this boat so i cannot tell you whether it squeaks or not but again it's where you don't have furniture moldings you are not adding to the stiffness of the boat so these are things you need to consider one thing i would say headroom here is probably comparable with Uber as two we've got probably i'm um, five foot nine we've probably got another six inches so let's call that six foot three six i, foot I four. think there's a bit less headroom but it doesn't really matter they're, they're all both... i would say to you is i'm not a big guy and i am really constrained walking through here yeah you, you, you if you were a big you, person if you're yeah. a big person you would really struggle with this yep i can't Getting into the shower cubicle is difficult. Um, getting through these doorways is narrow. But I, no one goes in there. I can't, literally, yeah. I can't get through there. Yeah. It's like Skyrim character. <laughs> so this is the dagger ball casing there. So obviously it does take up a little bit of room in the hull. So let's take a quick dive down into the starboard hull and see what surprises wait us down <laughs> there. These kind of like offset steps 
very beautiful down here. Again, in the corridor here, there is a huge, huge amount of storage. This is all seems to be finished in a bamboo, and I do love bamboo, and it's also sustainable. Plant machinery all down here, and they were very clear to point out to us that they keep all their plant machinery in these very, very like hermetically clean lockers. They're, it's really nice. Moving aft, we have pretty big heads. I've never oh. seen an aft heads here. Well, we actually have one on Ruby Rose. What, <laughs> what are you talking about? But so basically, there's a huge amount of space here. That this is probably a, you know, there's a big seat here, big bench seat, like massive amounts of windows. You know, if you really do want to shower yourself and, you know, wave your knob around to, <laughs> to the people in your anchorage, there you go. So again, the finish is amazing. So much storage here, like so much storage. Am I about to trip over something? No, it's all flat. Yeah. So it's all good. Again, this we have a privacy door here. So we're clearly in the master hole. Nice. Full size washing machine. And then moving forward here, we have what I can only presume is the master hole. It is a similar size to the uh, other hull. Couple of points to make out. Both berths are transverse in our boat. One berth is for aft, one berth is transverse, and essentially that gives us options to on on sea state as to which one we want to use if we're short-handed. Again, hatches here, there is one hatch above, and then there's two small opening hatches here. Again, everything here is done in Corian mineral. So let's have a look and then I will move past you and see what's in there. I can imagine it's a walk-in wardrobe. Let's see. Okay, we need to... <laughs> Shimmy. <laughs> Let's have a look, look in there. And again, we have... Oh, good grief. Four peak locker, emergency escape hatch here. There's really clever steps that are shelves, that are shelves that the steps are getting out. And clearly have someone here who's into their water sports. When I say water sports, I think I mean actual water sports because <laughs> there's some wetsuits in there. Can we just clarify? So this is like a locker that it's you a, access from the deck. It's like a wet locker versus just a, just a locker. You could use I it for walking. I don't mind that. I think that's yeah. actually really clever. clever. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very impressed with this. So balance 442, what do we think? Listen, before we get onto that, I wanna run through the statistics we used to put this into our old videos as a separate section, but it's important to go through this. And one thing that I do wanna to talk to you about is the weight of the boat. Now, I am someone that hates light ship displacement figures because they just mean nothing. They literally mean nothing. Balance very nicely actually give a base boat weight. Now that essentially means that you're not getting something which doesn't include the sails, doesn't include, doesn't include all the bits on the boat to try and get the statistics as low as possible for press releases. They actually give you the weight of the boat that includes the sails, includes the rigging, includes the anchor, base boat weight. Base boat weight 11,800 kilos. Now that is actually not bad for a 45 foot boat. Sea wind 1270, sea wind 1370, what boat are we on love? See when 1370 comes in around 12.3, we will come back to you with the weight for this boat when Sea Wind give it to us. We don't have it yet. Main sail area, 75 square meters. Furling jib square area, 30 square meters. Obviously there are the colored sails, there are your screechers and your asymmetrics to add to that. But we're looking at a pretty good sail area there. In addition to that, 44 foot overall length, 65 foot uh, air draft, but they are also making an ICW friendly one. The cost of the boat, $1 million as a base boat price. But once again, very nicely, they gave us the average boat. Average boat comes in at what, between 1.2 and 1.4 million US dollars. And we have 2026 availability. So what are your thoughts? What do you think? Balance 442. We have uh, shown this video already in its entirety to the Balance team and they have fed back to us with some pieces of information that we didn't have at the time because as you guys appreciate we're kind of walking through the boat as anyone would at a boat show you don't have all the information to hand um, as you're seeing it all for the first time so I do want to make some clarifications that the balance team wanted to kind of make sure we're conveyed one is that uh, they do have some uh, rationale for the fact that they don't do flush mounted hatches. They say that the hatches that they have give them greater flexibility for swapping out for different types of hatches and that it's more maintenance friendly as well. So they that's a decision that they've made, a very 
purposeful decision. Okay. They also, there was a comment um, in the video where Nick mentioned the boom height as you're standing there at the dock, the boom feels quite low. He did mention that obviously when the main is up, the boom is also raised. So Phil just wanted to make sure that everyone appreciated that you have plenty of clearance when you're at the, um, the upper helm area um, and that there's no issue. The, the boom clears the bimini when it's in the up position and it will clear anyone standing there as well. So Phil just wanted to make sure that everyone knew that. And the other thing that I wanted to bring to everyone's attention, um, which was a criticism that I had, was the ventilation. So the ventilation in the uh, main cabins down in the holes, we pointed out that there was not as much ventilation um, there as other models that we've seen. We did miss something though. We missed, and I did notice that on the day, but I was like, just didn't really think about it too much. There is a hatch behind the headboard. Any ideas where that hatch goes? No. It goes into the locker. So okay. we've got a locker in the same position. Oh, okay. So when it is raining, it's a wet locker. When it's raining, you open the locker, you gotcha. open the hatch above your headboard, and you still get airflow clever. coming through your cabin. So clever. So when they told me that over email, I'm like, that is actually a genius solution. Right. So I take back everything I said about ventilation in the cabins. It is actually probably like one of the best that I've seen because that is such a good solution. It's true, obviously, when you're in the tropics and you've got a cabin that is in the forward area, then you have to close your hatches every time it rains because okay. otherwise you get rained on. Clever. All right, can you give them that? Give yeah. them, give them credit for that. Yeah, for sure. So I was really impressed with that. Um, we also mentioned up in the saloon that the ventilation, there were only two relatively small opening hatches. There is the option to add more. And uh, look, I'm not going to get into kind of any debate over whether these like Safari windows are a good thing or a bad thing. Phil Ber I'm just going to say that Phil Berman has made a decision not to have Safari windows in the balance range. He believes that there's an issue with water intrusion. I'm sure that Richard Water would have something different to say. All I'm going to say on the Safari windows is that we love them. The ventilation is amazing. Obviously, when you're underway, you close them like you would close any hatch in a boat. Do you think we'll end up with like a WWF Richard Water versus Phil Berman? <laughs> I would pay good money to see that. I think, the rest of the, I think most of the boating world would. Yeah. Uh, but who would, um, no, we're not no, going to no, say, we're no. not going to go down that we're road. Start taking anyway, bets on that. anyway uh, so look likes dislikes okay so let's talk about the versa helm because we've both had a chance to mull that over yep and what i was and that's obviously a unique seller po selling point of the balance range and it's a very it's a it's an attempt at a, the solution of the compromises inherent in helm positions because in my opinion you either have a protected helm that has limited or some kind of limit on your visibility or you have amazing visibility, but the helm is not so well protected. So the Versa helm tries to, you know, kind of deal with that compromise. And there is obviously, you know, something to be said for being able to bring the helm position into that down position, bring that sliding hatch over so that the whole area is protected. And you do have very good visibility, um, surprisingly good visibility from that down position. And yep. They, Phil did say in his email to us that um, a lot of owners choose to dock in that down position and we can see why the visibility is actually really good from from that position for docking in particular. Um, but obviously any sale management has to be done from the up position. So oh. that's where the limitations kind of come in because anytime you want to sheet your sales or put your sales up or take your sales down or whatever, then you have to go up into that up position and then it doesn't matter what the conditions are, you have to be up there, you know, whether it's driving rain or whether it's like full sun or whether it's blowing 40 knots, you're up there. So that's, I guess, the same set of compromises that you'd make in any kind of, they call them like sports helms, those like raised helms. Um, I would say that, look, it's probably as good as you're going to get uh, in terms of having that compromise. I personally love our twin helms. I love the fact that they're kind of integrated into the entire cockpit area, saloon area. This is like one big space, whereas those upper helms or raised helms, they're separated. I liked it. Do I prefer it to the twin helms? 
not sure. I'd be really interested to actually go out and sail and use the helm as it's designed because I think it's only really then that we'd be able to yep. fully appreciate it. What were your thoughts? Uh, I agree with you. I think it's as good as you're going to get in compromise. Mm. All compromises, it, they always say it's the best of both worlds, but it can also be the, the worst of both worlds. Uh, my take on the Versa helm from the upward position, you cannot dock the boat. You cannot see any of the corners. I'm five foot nine, couldn't see any of them. Mm. From the down position, it is essentially where we are here. You have a down position, same as the sea wind, but you don't have the comfortable seat that we have. If I was going... Uh, to the Bahamas, if I wanted to go cruising around the Caribbean, that is actually a really, really damn good option for skippering. Mm. For ocean-going crossings, I would never be up there, ever. It's just not where I want to be. I don't like being up that high. I don't like the pendulum effect being exacerbated. The line management from up there, it's great, but you are still having to manage lines and you've just got one piece of wire holding you in the cockpit. And if you are in, a, if you are in big seas trying to do that and you've got a boom swinging around, it's just not for me, but, 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 I think for, I would happily circumnavigate in that boat, but yeah. I think I'd probably use the downward helm position for most of my, most of my uh, helming for at night offshore. Yeah, yeah, for everything that, that's one thing. Yeah. Uh, overall, if I had to grade that, I think it's as good as you're gonna get. I probably would like to see a slightly better helm seat down below. But or, you, um, sorry, that was an option. So you oh, could you have, kinda, okay, fine. Uh, so the, the standard boat comes with like, just I believe like a stool that comes out. So it's not a full <clears> chair like yeah. ours, um, but you can have a, a, a seat there, but yeah. the, owner of that boat uh, has opted for more galley storage Fine. okay um and the other thing that i wanted to take note of and sorry if this was it's oh, yeah. going into a different direction but the um the man cave yes which i loved actually mm -hmm. that was great um that's kind of a semi-custom option okay. for that particular owner okay. and that i think goes to show that balance are open to some kind of customization. Oh, we've always talked to Phil about this. Yeah. They make semi custom boats. And Phil also mentioned that if you wanted to make some adjustments to that down helm position, the seat and yeah. the lack of footrest, then that can be adjusted. I would, a little I'd bit. have tweaked a few things, but they yeah. are things that you could tweak literally at final fit out, like yeah. positions of some of the switches, I think, yeah. are un that, uh, they're not user friendly. Um, you, I would want horns in two places. I'd literally and, that. and the grab rail was yeah, not yeah. in the right. But these yeah. are small things that you could actually even tweak now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so what else do we want to talk about? I think that the um, the vibe, okay. just the vibe. Let me just address the kind of like elephant in the room for us. Uh, let me just say, the build quality of that boat. Yeah. It is insanely good. So good. It, it is amazing. I, I kind of went on, I understand that we're at a boat show. We're looking at a boat that has been polished to high heaven for a boat show. The interior finish of that boat is exceptional. Yeah. Absolutely Very exceptional. Beautiful. And you know what, when we did our review back in 2019 of the balance, five, 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 five whatever, <laughs> uh, I would say that the finish on the 442 is better. We loved the finish of the balance 52, whatever yeah. it is. Um, I'll link to that uh, review in the description as well, so you can go and watch it. We loved the, the finish, didn't yep. we? We said at the time it was really beautifully done. If any of you guys stepped on board at the Annapolis Boat Show, um, comment down below, by the way, and let us know what you think. Uh, but I, we heard a lot of commentary at the show, people saying to us, what do you think of the balance? Yep. We were really impressed. So I think that the boat impresses. For sure. I would give it a 10 out of 10 for interior finish. Mm. Like it, it is flawless, mm. absolutely flawless. They have put a lot of work into it. Whoever the naval architects are that do the final finish, they've done an amazing, amazing job. Yep. So finish there, absolutely insanely good. So good. Things that I, I'm gonna nitpick about a few points. Yeah. Uh, point one, I wanna nitpick. It is got, it has got such free board. It is a big old lump. It look, it makes this boat, which is the same waterline length, like look mini. <laughs> it is huge. The, the amount of interior space yeah. is insane. Whether or not you want that much free board, it, obviously it really comes into effect when you are trying to sail upwind, when you're getting that amount of windage, it comes into effect when you're trying to dock and you've got like winds. But it has a, it carries a whole amount of freeboard, and the headroom is substantially bigger, and that can be a good or a bad thing. But for me, it carries a lot of windage. That's the first thing. Second point, uh, and this is personal preference, is that this boat, the C One Thirty Seventy, has a big flowing flat area, and I personally like that. The Balance Four Four Two has kind of more different levels, which kind of does break up the seating a little bit. It's very, it's not as open as this. Yeah. Personal preference. And the final thing, and this is a really random niggle, and I'm sure that 
Balance will address this. They have a completely straight jib track, which essentially means they have an inefficient jib. Well, actually, I forgot to ask them about that yep. in the emails, and I should have done, and I apologise. So, um, Balance, I invite you to uh, leave a comment down below, and I will pin it to the top of the comments. Um, so, please, by all means, um, you know, yep. tell us anything that you need to tell us. And uh, yeah, the the straight jib track kind of was a yep. little bit of an odd one because usually they're curved for good reason. Straight. But, Bill Berman does not strike me as someone who does things by accident. No, no. I assume there's a no, no. reason. No. So basically, in conclusion, I absolutely love the boat. I thought it was an amazing, amazing, amazing boat. What people are no doubt going to ask is, if you had your time again, would you, and you were, you had this, the C-Win 1370, or the Balance 442, what would you pick? That is a very, very, very difficult question to answer. I absolutely love this boat. This boat is amazing. If the finish in the... 1370 was the same as the uh, 442. It would be an absolute, it'd be an absolute no-brainer. But I think that the finish here is related to the fact that it's it's made in a modular way, so you can't have all this lovely bamboo furniture. And so you do think, well, are you going to get squeaks? Are things going to shift? Obviously, in a new boat, you may not get squeaks. In an older boat, you know, once things start shifting around a bit, it could be really squeaky. This boat in 20 years time will still not squeak because of the construction of it. It is also lighter and stiffer. So there is a lot to be said with that. I just was very, very impressed with the finish of that boat. I think that, that there is definitely, I know that we all go to boat shows to look at certain things. There was definitely the wow factor to that. For I sure. got on board and I went, wow. Yeah. They have yeah. knocked it out of the park. They here. really have. It's so, um, well done balance. Yeah, for sure. And um, Phil in his email said the boats do not squeak and there was an exclamation mark at the end of that sentence. <laughs> so I'm just going to pass that information on. Um, look, I think that at the end of the day, no one has seen the 1370 at a boat show yet. Only a few of you who um, mainly were our patrons came and attended the event um, here in Pattaya, uh, which I don't actually think we've talked about on YouTube yet. Anyway, I, that's all coming. And um, so it'll be interesting to see when more people get a chance to see the 1370, yep. uh, what people think, uh, because it is natural to compare those two. They're both 45 foot catamarans, um, you know, really good build quality, not your usual production kind of Lagoon or Ponte Pajo or whatever. So if you're in the market for a 45 foot cat and this was what we wanted and yep. at the time we were looking there wasn't there wasn't the balance 442 there wasn't the hh44 um the antares was uh, not yet updated so it was kind of the older style are we doing a view of that we're doing a youtube short because we didn't get oh, okay yeah right. so the antares is another one that you should put into the mix because it is stunning yeah um so yeah, now I think there are more options than four or five years ago when we're looking. But anyway, my point is that any of those boats, Seaman 1370, Balance 442, HH44, Antares, what's it called? 40, 44. 44. Yeah. You'd be happy with any of them. Take your pick. Yeah, uh, look, uh, two final things to say. Uh, agreed with everything Therese says. There is, while Seawind have been building the 1370, a lot of competition has come out. The market is in a very different place now. My whole take on it is that uh, the big people are getting far more discerning with sailing. We said this back in 2019, 2020, people were starting to not just want a lagoon. Yeah. Not the same thing, wrong with lagoons, a boat that didn't have performance issues. They, people are now starting to pay very, very close attention to performance, whole design, whole shape. Thank you to Antoine back in the day for getting all that done. Thank you to Francois Peru, a friend of ours now who designs these boats and has designed a lot of boats where he's given us a lot of information about hull design and how hull shape makes performance. People want performance now, and you can now, if you are willing to pay a little bit more, and let's just face facts, a Lagoon 44, 45 is not gonna cost that much less than a <laughs> 1370 mm. or a balance. You can get performance and build quality in one vessel. So the market is changing, and as such, there are manufacturers, as Teresa has said, Antares, HH, Seawind, Balance, that are really, like, lifting the, lifting the game in the Catarine market. There's also other brands, the Vision 444, yeah, that's which is a, something a else. Coming. A review coming up of yeah. that. These are boats, when yeah, you I get forgot, on board. Sorry, I forgot to mention the Vision 444. Um, so, yeah, yeah. We, so those are boats that we're really like, okay. And I do think now, when we were doing our initial review series back in 2019, there essentially were the very high-end, privileged, you know, gold-plated peacocks. <laughs> then there were the Uchimers, like, 
wait, no, we're not having a toilet. You can literally have a bucket. <laughs> Although it's a very beautiful bucket. And then there were the production cats and a few boutique builders. Like exquisite. Exquisite. But they were all building bigger boats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, this 45, this 45 foot field is a battleground. In it, everyone, every manufacturer has picked up. Actually, people do want a 45 foot boat. And so it will be very interesting over the coming five years to see what is available. And that brings me on to my final point. As you know, we did a whole comprehensive review series. This, I believe, is our 20th review, and we are going to refresh these reviews over the coming years. But if you are interested in seeing us do these reviews with our own objective take, with all this kind of now newer knowledge from talking to the naval architects, watching the build, if you're interested, let us know, because there are a lot of boat shows coming up, and now that the COVID thing has passed, we are super interested in getting back to making review videos because it actually kind of, yeah, it focuses us on, you know, making content for you and also assessing what the market is because it's, to me it's very interesting. So yeah, if that is of it. interest to you, let us know down below and we will head to subsequent boat shows. There's a lot coming up. There's Miami coming up. There is Cannes coming up, La Grand Mott coming up. There's Sanctuary Cove in August. <laughs> we're not going to Sanctuary Cove. Apparently we're not. <laughs> Southampton, let's not forget Southampton. Yeah. So there's a lot of boat shows, there's a lot of things I want to see. I want to see the innovation. I, and actually, a lot of these, innova these new innovations, clearly where manufacturers may have been getting a little bit complacent, they're now like, we're going to put a hatch behind the headboard and have it open. Yeah. Clever. Very clever. When people think like stuff like that, it makes me think up and go, if you're putting that attention to detail into that, you're putting attention to detail elsewhere. Anyway. Do you want to sign off? Yeah, okay. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and please let us know in the comments down below what you think of the Balance 442, um, particularly if you were lucky enough to jump on board at Annapolis or in any other boat show. Uh, what do you think? Uh, we loved it. I think that that's fair to say. Uh, there were a few compromises. The Verso Helm is really interesting. Uh, we would love to actually sail on board a 442 to use that Verso Helm in real life so that we can kind of assess how it works in real life. But yeah, great boat, very, very beautiful, and uh, a great option for you guys if you're in the market. So subscribe to our channel if you wanna see more reviews. We are obviously still putting out plenty of sailing content, so if you like watching us sail around Thailand, then hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next week with a, another video. Take, Take care. care. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>